And now we're down to the final topic of the course, organic reactions. We're going to start off with combustion. Combustion is also known as burning. This is combustion, where organic products react with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. And any unburned fuel glows with the heat of the reaction and produces a flame. So combustion is when any organic compound reacts with oxygen in the presence of heat to produce carbon dioxide, water vapor, and lots and lots of heat. It's a very exothermic reaction, which is why we use it for heating stuff and cooking stuff. The first six reactions on reference table I are all combustions. They all have organic compounds that react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. And look how monster exothermic these reactions are. That's combustion. The second organic reaction is fermentation, which makes ethanol, you know, ethyl alcohol, otherwise known as C2H5OH. To make ethanol, you need a source of sugar. And this sugar can come from many different sources. It can come from grains, it can come from fruits. The simple sugar glucose gets eaten by yeast. These are yeast particles right here. They're actually alive and they eat the sugar. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I mean, who wouldn't eat sugar? Sugar's delicious. But yeast doesn't eat things the way we eat things. See, when we eat things, we undergo respiration where we breathe in oxygen and breathe out water vapor and carbon dioxide. That's aerobic respiration. Yeast undergoes anaerobic respiration uses an enzyme called zymase to break down the sugar. This is how it gets energy out of it. Carbon dioxide is given off and ethanol. Ethanol which can be used as E85 flex fuel. The source of sugar for E85 flex fuel is corn. You can also make wine and beer and other alcoholic beverages out of this same process. That's why it's called brewer's yeast. It's a very lucrative product. But you got to be careful because this stuff is also toxic. It's so toxic that basically the yeast is urinating out this liquid alcohol and breathing out carbon dioxide gas. It's basically bathing in its own waste products. Like if somebody locked you in a room that was completely sealed up and gave you all the food you wanted to eat but no place to go to the bathroom, eventually you'd die from the concentration of your own toxic waste products. And that's what the yeast does. Around a concentration of 14% or so, the yeast dies in its own waste product. It's like drowning to death in its own pee. Ew. Saponification so is an age-old process. Combustion is the oldest chemical reaction. Ooh, we like fire. Fermentation is the second oldest chemical reaction. Mmm, fruit tastes funny. Me feel funny. First you sit around the campfire, and then you get a little inebriated, I don't recommend this, and then bleh, you vomit up all over yourself. You've got no choice but to wash it off with soap. Soap is where you take fat, hot steaming animal fat, you know you could also use vegetable oil, and you react it with a strong base, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. This forms soap and glycerol. I'm going to show you why right now. This is a molecule of fat. It looks kind of fat, doesn't it? It's got carbons, three carbons here, and it's got 17, oh my gosh, this is a huge carbon chain right here. This is called glycerol stearate, is the name of this particular molecule. Anyway, when you react it with sodium hydroxide, these arms snap off. The OH from the sodium, the Na, bonds with them, and the OH from the hydroxide bonds with this. You get glycerol as a product, and each of these molecules here is a molecule of soap. Substitution and addition reactions we did a couple of videos ago. You can go back and take a look at those videos again. Substitution was where you replaced a hydrogen with a halogen. Addition is where you broke a double bond and put the halogen on either side of where that double bond was.